Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we continue our study of embedded systems design. In this video, we are finally going to create our first program, which is called Blinky. So we are going to blink one of the LEDs on the MSP430 uh, FR2355 launchpad. Do not worry about understanding the code for this video. Uh, you haven't, we haven't covered any of the instruction mnemonics yet and what they do. This is just basically to walk you through the process of how the program development uh, works. Okay, so launching CCS, entering code, compiling it, downloading it, running it, uh, seeing just the whole process. And then as we, we do more and more of these videos, you'll understand more and more of the code. Uh, <clears throat> but it's also just a matter of like just getting more stick time. And it's just you want to just develop programs over and over and over and over. And that's what the whole point of this series of videos is going to be. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So I guess take a deep breath and off we go. I'm going to launch Code Composer. <clears throat> Let me prepare you. The first time you run Code Composer, it is going to take forever. That The reason is that <clears throat> when you run your first project and you'll see when uh, it has to build a whole bunch of stuff for this particular processor and it takes forever when you launch code composer mine probably come up way faster than yours will it will actually come up faster and faster each time you run it uh, this down here is kind of a dynamic heap allocation so it's trying to go out and optimize itself you don't have to worry about it this doesn't mean that the program is loading it just means that it's it's doing some background memory allocation so you don't have to worry about that <clears throat> and so here we are Code Composer Studio, we are going to enter some code that I wrote, uh, not very original code, uh, it's probably been written a million times for this microcontroller, uh, and we're gonna make an LED blank. So here's what we're gonna do. We have our workspace, and we've already set it to the default location in the last video. If I create a new project, it's gonna go in that workspace and it'll show up right here. So let's go ahead and come up here and go File, New, and you're going to do file new CCS project. Okay. Always important to do CCS. <clears throat> this window is going to pop up and there's some very critical things in here. The first and foremost one is the first time you launch this, it's going to, it's not going to have a device here or it will have a, a different device that you're not using. You need to type in the device that you're targeting. So here is where we need to do M S P and it'll filter automatically over here. 430FR2355. And so once you finally get it, once you set that, you'll never have to set it again. It'll always default to the last microcontroller. <clears throat> so that's a step that you only have to do the first time. Now we're going to give a project name. And here, notice that it's using the default location of what we set our workspace to last time. Uh, that's good. We don't have to worry about that. We're gonna name this project. Now, I came up with a naming convention that I like for myself. You can do whatever naming convention you want. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna differentiate our assembly programs from our C programs. So I'm gonna actually give the start of the project name ASM underscore, <clears throat> and it'll basically organize our, our projects as we add all these 50 or 60 projects that we're gonna be doing in, in this book. And I just want to keep them straight. I want to know that I'm developing in, in assembly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and call this ASM Blinky. And then here's the, you leave the compile version the same. Here's the key step though. One of the other key steps. <laughs> this is the type of program you're going to create. You are going to do empty assembly only project. <clears throat> when it's, when you say empty, it's not actually empty. It's going to put in some code in there that we'll see. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's assembly. You don't, want to do C yet, or it'll create a main.c for you, but this is actually going to create a main.asm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish, and it is going to create a project, and it's going to give me a main.asm. So notice a couple things. We have over in Project Explorer, we now have asm underscore blinky, and that is our active project, and if I wanted to look inside of the, the project, I can expand it. And I see like, here's my main ASM, here's a linker file. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that we don't need to worry about right now. But look at this. It gave us a main.asm file and it pre-populated some, some of the setup code. And this is fantastic because then we don't have to set up some of the rudimentary, basically, tasks that are important for actually developing a program. 
Uh, <clears throat> you do not have to know what any of this stuff is. I'm going to walk through it just really quick just so you get used to hearing it. But if I scroll down, I start seeing that you have some comments here that says main loop here. This is where we will develop our program. So that's where we're going to enter some instructions. So really quick, let's let's look at <laughs> what the, what this is. And you don't have to, <clears throat> again, you don't have to understand this. But the first thing that it does in here is it drops a directive called .cdecls or .c .cdecls. And it's got some, uh, it's got a couple arguments in here. And basically what this does is it pulls in a header file uh, called msp430. And this is going to have a bunch of uh, <clears throat> labels and identifiers created for us so that we don't have to go look up specific addresses. We can actually just use substitutions. But what's neat about it is that it also, this header is written in C. So these operations or these uh, arguments right here tell it that it's like, you know what? It's fine. This is going to be a C file. We're in a development environment that's going to use both assembly and C. Then if we scroll down here, again, you don't have to remember that. Uh, it's just kind of, if, just in case you're kind of curious what <laughs> what these things are. The dot def directive uh, means that we're going to use a label called reset and it's got to be it's going to be seen in other files. So this reset is going to be used in other files, but it was defined here. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to come down and look here's dot text. Remember this was a uh, memory allocation directive. It's going to say everything after here is going to go in program memory. Okay, so all the everything that follows is code. Okay, it's basically opcodes and operands. There's two more. Uh, there's two more directives right here: retain and retain refs. And what they do is they keep our code from being optimized out. Essentially, okay. Uh, a lot of the programs we write aren't going to do really anything meaningful. It's just a way to learn how the architecture works. And so the optimizer will look at our programs and think we're stupid. They'll think that we're just creating loops that do nothing but loop. And that's true, but we're doing it because we want to learn how to do loops. And we want to learn, we want to look at the CPU as stuff happens. And an optimizer will take stuff, it'll just delete our code and say, I know best. <clears throat> so this kind of prevents it from doing that so that we can learn. Uh, and then we come down here and there's actually some instructions that were, were inserted for us. Look, again, you don't even need to know what this is, but you notice it's like, well, MOV, we, we kind of talked about that. That Yeah, that was a move instruction. I don't know how it works. There's some stuff. There's a pound sign in there. Wow, there's SP. That probably stands for stack pointer. If I look at the, the comment, it says initialize stack pointer. This instruction is probably initializing the stack pointer. <laughs> then it comes down here and you got like stop WDP. T, WDT, whatever that is, and there's a whole bunch of pipes in here and all this. Look at it, ampersand. What's going on? Well, this apparently is stopping the watchdog timer. I'm glad they did that for me. I didn't want to do that. Then we come down here, and you got your main loop, and that's where we'll put our code. And then you come down here, and there's some stack pointer definition. Here's dot .global. That allows other files to see this particular, uh, this particular text or this label. Uh, there's a dot section, which means that it's going to put information in a, the stack area, apparently. And then finally, interrupt vectors. Whoa. So it looks like it's trying to set up a, the reset vector for us. All of this stuff we are actually going to cover as we walk through this textbook. Okay. And like I say, you do not need to know any of this right now. And now what we're going to do is do something that should, it might even be more weird. We're going to type in a program that is going to make the LED blink. And you do not need to know anything that is happening. You're just going to type along with me and get used to the way that the program development works. And then I'll kind of explain what's going on. And we'll just do it over and over and over. And we'll, we'll add a little bit more detail about how instructions work. And then we'll add a little bit more details about why we're doing what we're doing, what directives we're using. And eventually you'll build up an understanding for how to develop programs. Okay. So this one is just basically you walk along with me and we'll make an, an uh blink init i'm going to create a label this is an address label called init i'm going to come down here and i'm going to tab over and i want to align it with the other opcodes in here remember how i said the op the operand or not operand the mnemonic field is not case sensitive so i can make an instruction which is you know move or i can do move i'm going to do lowercase for the rest of this book because they gave me lowercase and i don't want to be capitalized down here and have lowercase up here so i'm always going to use lowercase 
type this instruction with me, bic.w, and then tab over, and then type pound 0001h, and then type ampersand pm5ctl0. That instruction, this instruction right here is a bit clear. The dot w makes it a 16-bit operation, and it basically cleared locate, bit location one in this particular configuration register. What this did was it disabled the GPIO power on high Z. So what this does is when you come out of reset, the MCU takes all of its inputs, all of its ports, and it turns them into inputs so that nobody, it, it basically turns them off. It makes them high impedance. And we need to turn on the digital IO system because we're going to drive an LED. So again, you don't have to know what that means, but it's kind of interesting. Next instruction, instruction. BIS dot B, we're going to do now an 8-bit operation, and we want to go pound 01H. Remember, H means hex. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do ampersand P1DIR. What is that? I'm actually setting the P port 1 bit 0 as an output. <clears throat> Why port 1 bit 0? Because it is LED 1 on the launchpad board. Again, you don't need to know that. Now I come down here and it's time for my main loop. So I'm going to do another address label called main, and I'm going to tab over and I'm going to do this. XOR.B. That's an exclusive OR operation. You, it's pretty obvious that the, <laughs> the mnemonic is XOR. And then do pound 01H. That's going to be a mask that we will exclusive OR with the following port, B1 out. Okay. Interesting, it's like a port one out, that must mean you're gonna to go to port one and drive the output, and that is going to toggle P10, which is LED one. All right, I'm not really understanding what's going on, or you don't have to understand what's going on, but it's fun to type. Now let's do this, move W and do this, go pound zero F, 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 H, and then do R4. And I'm, this puts a big number in R4. The way that this, so what I've done right here is I have taken the number FFFF, which is 16 ones, and I put that value into register four in the CPU. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a loop that's gonna count down so that when we toggle the LED, then we'll delay like a half a second and then we'll go toggle it again and then we'll delay a half second. But look at the way that the, a couple subtleties of this that we'll continue to talk about. Whenever you have some number that starts with A, B, C, D, or E, or F, like a hex number, you have to put a zero in front of it. In front of it. And that tells CCS that, oh, you're not doing something like putting Frank, which might be a address label, you are putting a hex number. Okay, so this one, you'll, you'll always make mistakes on, on that. And I'll, I'll show you the compiler after we're done with this. Okay. So I did that, and now what I want to do is I'm going to make a little loop here. I'm going to go delay. Notice how when I put the colon is when it changes the, the color. Optional colon, but it makes it way, read, way more readable. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrement my R4 register. I'm going to go decrement R4. So I turn it down one. And then I'm going to put a, a conditional branch instruction in here. You don't need to know how to do this. But I'm going to say... If it's not equal to zero, go ahead and jump back up to here. And the way this will work is we'll start at FFFF and we'll, it will be like decrement FFFE. And then it'll jump back here because it's not zero. And then it'll be FFFD. Jump back up here because it's not zero. And it'll go down and down and down. And it'll basically get to like three, two, one, zero. And once it's out, off from there, so it'll sit there and repeat until our Four equals zero. After it does that, I'm ready to then jump back up to main and toggle the LED again. So I just do this instruction, not right there at all, but I do jump and I do main, main, and then I'll do repeat main loop forever. This is your program. Okay. Again, you didn't need to know how to do that, but it just helps to learn this stuff, to type it over and over and over. Uh, just 
just compile, run it, compile, run it. And we're going to go through, like I said, we're going to go through all these instructions and figure out what they, they do. Go ahead and save it. So I'm going to control S or do file, save. And now you are going to press this button. This is the debug button. If you do not have any compile errors, this will handle every step in the process for you from assembling it, linking it, creating the executable object file, and actually downloading it to the MSP430 launchpad board. If you have an error, you will it will stop that process and it will give you a log right here. I'm gonna hit this button. So here we go. I hit that and it is now doing its thing and it gives me a status here of what's going. It's running in the background, configuring the board, configuring the debugger, <clears throat> and it has now just downloaded my program. My program is not running yet. I have to hit run. Let me warn you, <clears throat> or not warn you, let me just tell you. The first time you do that in CCS, it takes forever. I, had, I just did it off camera when I wasn't recording. It, it took almost 15 minutes for, to build that first project. And that's because it had to build all, it had to bring in all the library information for the particular MCU we're using. Notice how fast mine went. That was because I had already done it. So I didn't want to have, make you wait for my build. So, but it did, it took like 15 minutes. So right now, if you're sitting there and yours is just sitting there saying, it'll have a warning that says having to build a library for the first time, uh, go ahead and pause this video and let it complete. And it will complete, just let it run. Uh, in some computers, I've seen students sit there for a half an hour and it sucks and it's just part of it. So now I'm ready. I have my program downloaded and now I have my MSP430. And if I press this button right here, it is gonna run and lo and behold, LED one is blinking. We did it, life is good, huh? Look at that, that's awesome. <laughs> and then I can actually come in and I can suspend it. Watch this, I suspend it, it halts it. I can run it again. And when I am done actually messing around with this, what I do is I go ahead and hit stop. That terminates my program. Well, it actually terminates the debug session and then we're off and running. So that was, we did it. We just made the LED blink. The last thing I wanna show you though is let me, let me type something that has a typo on here. Like for example, this one that's gonna bite you the whole time. Let me do this. Okay, so this, I, that is not correct. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a debug and I'm gonna see if it throws an error. And it did. So it said, oh boy, errors exist. Uh, proceed with launch. No, I don't wanna download binaries that are wrong. So I come down here and I notice, hey, it's, there's an error. So I, to find out where it is, I scroll up and it says, oh, error, the following symbols are undefined. FFFF. I was like, oh no, what does this mean? Well, it turns out I have this little buddy right here. It thought it, it can't start with a letter. It has to start with a number if I'm specifying a hex number in, in the operand field. So I go ahead and save that. And that is it. We did it. Okay. You should feel very good about yourself right now. <laughs> and we will end this video right here. And then we'll, we'll do another video on the next step, which is going to be looking at the, uh, we're going to be looking at the actual debugger. Okay. So congratulations, your first MCU program. Uh, as always, remember life is good. And remember to subscribe to my channel. So you're always getting the most up-to-date videos.